Um, just want to check in the Chinese market uh, when you're talking about families, what is the average <laughs> family size for the extended family group? And I will see the four people, one family, or sometimes like multi-generation family, six to eight, or sometimes to some unpopular destination in terms of the you know, sense of the security, they will come like two family combination. So generally speaking, it's less eight people, less 10 people. Okay, and would they generally be chauffeur driven or would they drive themselves? Uh, sorry, I didn't got your question. Would they hire a driver and vehicle or would they drive themselves? I think the most of the time they will have their driver speaking guide to drive them around. Um, some of the destination, for example, United States, for example, Australia, for example, New Zealand. So the market is very mature for the China. So lead actually to do the self-driving as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Benny for your insight. I just want to ask you a question in regards to the Chinese traveler. We know that they do check um, and l read the reviews online when they make the decision. And when their friends and family members have visited to a destination, do they rely more on word of mouth or do they rely more on online reviews? I, I mean, I will see the balance, honestly. I think uh, uh, word of the most, if you want to me to stand one side, I think probably it's the relative or friends, word of the most is much important rather than, you know, the, 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 you know some you know, online you know, survey or you know, the, 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 the website. You know, this is what I think, yeah. Okay. Yeah, hi, sorry, Actually, Benny. Actually, I'll just... Um, Sorry, jump in there for the U.S. traveler, because from our, our recent research, um, we've been firm believers in consumer reviews. We know the kind of influence that TripAdvisor has. So we uh, integrated into our website um, the opportunity for our members to list their itineraries and what they cost, and then for consumers to comment on those itineraries who've actually taken them. So today we have over 40,000 itineraries and 25,000 consumer reviews. We believe that it's playing a more increasingly greater role in how uh, consumers today purchase travel. And while, you know, word of mouth and friends and family certainly are not um, ever going to go away and uh, will be less relevant, but they like to hear from people who've actually experienced that package trip to Ireland. Mm -hmm. And what we also learned was that they are open to sponsored content. So if you're a DMO and you want to sponsor content and, and they're a willing recipient to hear your messages, they mm -hmm. also place uh, an increasingly greater uh, amount of importance on that too. So I think we're gonna see more and more when it comes to consumer reviews, and content uh, that's sponsored. Thank you for sharing that. We have a question up here in the back. Uh, sorry, I want to explore a little bit, uh, probably it's uh, sort of a supplement to you. When the Chinese people booking the hotel, they have the pre-reference. They want Wi-Fi free. That's very important. <laughs> because no matter how much they pay the hotel for the accommodation, they maybe the pay you know, like $300, $500, but the, they think the, the Wi-Fi need to be free. Because why? Because they want to share all the experience through the journey to their friends. That's the first one. Second one, Chinese traveler very much would like to place their stomach. So they want the good food restaurant around. And the, if you have the figure to do the survey, the more restaurant in the Instagram or WeChat is more than everything else. <laughs> we are not going to take questions because we're just going to pass it back and forth. But to pick up on, on what my friend here just uh, shared with you, um, we're also finding um, how important it is 
uh, for people to utilize social media. So they want free Wi-Fi. That's, Americans want that as well. But we've also found that um, they're now hiring professional photographers when they travel to take pictures of them in destinations that become Instagram moments. So no long, well, I won't say no longer, but you know, the day of the selfie just doesn't cut it. They've gotta have somebody who can really capture it and make it significant, and they're willing to pay for that. It's crazy, sorry. Terry, look, photographer, let's say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that okay. wasn't posed. Though. Question up here, sorry guys. Unless, do you have some? No, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think we could just stand here and talk all afternoon. <laughs> okay, sorry, Benny, I just had one question. On the visa, boring one, it was a visa, a lot of the people that travel at the moment with me, there would be the father and the son or the mother and the daughter rather than the husband, wife, and the child traveling together. Is there any restrictions now on the mother, father, and child acquiring visas to travel? Steve, I didn't hear your question. Could you repeat it again? Sorry. Is there any restriction on mother, father, and the child traveling together from, for the visa situation? Is it easy for families to acquire the visas? Okay, I got you, Steve. And uh, I think uh, the latest news for the UK, United Kingdom visa, if there is a bank in China called CIIT, the bank, if you have a about 100,000 RMB, so you can divide about eight, that's dollar. If that is a saving, if you do have American visa or single visa, so most likely you can get the British visa straight away. When the case under the 16 years old, you have to get guardians or people who are adult to travel with you. If not, the parents travel with the kids, I don't think that's any problem. Okay. Do you want to add anything? Any last remarks here? Oh, two more. And then we cut it. Okay. okay. One here. So my question is uh, both you know, for Terry and Benny. Uh, you represent, uh, both of you, very huge countries. Okay, and uh, can, we, can we say that uh, both countries, USA and China, have the same type of behavior. So uh, means, you know, in America, I do think there is several, you know, different markets, and in China too. So means it's difficult to globalize, yeah. you know, the attitude of the consumer. No, we, we can't say that the Chinese market is similar to the US market. And it's, it, it, it's really hard, it's like saying, you know, you're a Republican, you're a Democrat back in the States. It's all a mess right now. And the traveler, the, the traveler, I should not go down that path, sorry, sorry. I just can't help myself. The traveler today can fit into so many different silos. So whether it's multi-generational, whether it's an incentive, a honeymoon, um, whether it's art. So it's really kind of hard, even when I was sharing what I shared, to make these sweeping generali generalizations because there's a, there's a niche there, depending on who you represent and who you're trying to attract, that exists in the US. I would say it probably exists as well in China. It's just make, making sure you know who your market is and the best way to reach it. It's Benny, you're, you're mostly East Coast, right? You're not. Central China, your Sorry? families, your portfolio yeah. is mostly from the East Coast. Right, I mean, come back to your question. I think um, we are quite different. I always say, into the China, you need to find the right person, right time, in the right angle to merge into the China market. It's not easy, because I've been working with a lot bigger, you know, the big company. Unfortunately, not really successful, should be. Um, I will say, China, uh, they actually have about 100 million people overseas travel at, at the moment. Only have about 70 uh, million passport has been issued. So some of them, you know, cross over the apps, uh, mm. you know, repeat, uh, you know, the travelers. So the potential is there. So everybody knows. So how can you to approach China? I think China is still a, China is still a de developing country compared to the United States. It's, you know, it's a developed country. 
from the developing country to developed country, we actually spend a lot of the time, a lot of the efforts, a lot of money to buy things. But one day, when we realize it doesn't to represent our travel behavior, we are going to change. Now, I think the time is coming because most of the people is changing at the moment. They want more deeply, more authentic, more friendly, more culture, you know, oriented culture. They wanted to know, they, they wanted to embrace the, the, the world. This is the I can tell. Good to hear. We have one final question over here. It's possible that you already are responding to my question. Uh, we are starting business with uh, Chinese uh, uh, in the latest, and uh, we discovered that they like very much to be involved, to be engaged, to be protagonist of what we do. Um, and I see that you talk also about culture and so on. So I would like to know how is behavior changing? I mean, it is true that there is a need for involvement, engagement, so making experience as protagonist. Um, okay, uh, I mean, it's, it's a big question. I mean, the general speaking, I think for the large travel family, they're looking for the customer, customers, custom, uh, customer size, you customize the group, experience, and they want the unique experience, unique, there's a two very, you know, central elements. So I'm not really sure. I mean, if you come from different country, the different country have some sort of the, you know, relevant, you know, the, the culture, China, very fond about that. And uh, uh, for example, uh, UK, China is very mad about the royal. So when the Meghan and the Henry, so Arab people look at the, you know, the, the, watch the TV, that sort of thing. And a couple of times I represented the Asprey in the United Kingdom to China and the most people actually recognize because they say, oh, Megan with the earring is from the Esprit, that shop. So people does go through some channel to recognize you know, the destination. And, and the other thing I think you need to, uh, to make a story. I'm not asking you to lie, but you need to create a story, the background. People in China at the moment travel globally very fascinating about the stories. Thank you very much. And uh, this is going to be the last question today. Hi, uh, just a quick question. In the Chinese market, is the, do the travelers typically like to plan everything in advance or do they follow the trend to book tours and activities when they're in destination? Uh, Thank you. Uh, 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 unfortunately not. We are very, un if I put this way, I'm not trying to offend some, you know, uh, my nation, because I myself is Chinese, because traditionally, culturally, we are not organized any tour in other ones. Japan is complete separate, uh, exceptional. So we also always call Chinese group, Chinese traveler, the last minute dot com. <laughs> <laughs> but, Because I, I, I don't want to please you because I give you the false information because this is a thing. Uh, no matter you like or you dislike, they are there, they are existing. If you want to embrace that, you have to ad adapt yourself. But the more you change, because they are more keen to this. So I'm sure they are going to confirm with you. So they just need a sort of the time because most of the time, you in particular travel with a different age of the group. They have to change the program all the time. Even the father usually is the key role to making the money, financial you know, resource. So they are very busy. They always change the schedules. So this is the thing. Thank you, Penny. Now, you noticed how perhaps uh, some of the women in here has been a bit shy today. But now you're really coming forward, all of you. And so we will take yet another question down here. Oh. <laughs> Hello. It's not a question, actually. I want to add something. Um, I'm Linda from Noble Travel Tours in the United States. I want to add uh, a little bit more about the USTOA that he said we are so envious of their culture and food, but I think we're uh, so envious of their brain as well for European people, people from Europe. Good point, okay, thank you. That's gonna be the final note. Please give these gentlemen a big hand, thank you.